Here are five reasons why you should skip the M2 and actually wait for the M3 processor. Number one, the M1 is still powerful. If you're already on M1 now, you have a machine that is still just as powerful as it was the day M2 was released. And really the most simplest way to describe the gains moving to M2, at its core, you're looking at 12 to 18% in most creative tasks. When looking at the base M1 versus M2 processor, now the gains might be a bit more when going to the M2 Max, and there are some tests that show the M2 Pro is on par with the M1 Max. The memory bandwidth is actually still the same, albeit with more RAM. And yes, GPU performance is higher at 30%. And that's really because they added more GPU cores. But none of this actually changes what the incredible M1 chip can still do. Check out that desk my MacBook Pro is sitting on. The ER Gear height adjustable electric standing desk has a sturdy solid metal frame with aerospace grade lifting column connectors and is super easy to assemble. There are many reasons why you should switch to an adjustable standing desk which will improve your ergonomics and health. The ER Gear has smooth height adjustment from 28 inches to 46 inches and you can save your favorite three settings and smoothly switch between them. It features powerful lifting performance with a max load of 176 pounds and it's reliable for long-term operation, tested to over 50,000 times and still going strong. It comes in three different colors, so be sure to use my affiliate links down below to purchase one of these amazing, well-built and designed desks. And if you're like me, you remember the woes of Intel-based Macs, especially in the MacBook Pros. So for those of you still on Intel-based Macs, you will have a mind-blowing experience just moving up to M1. When you go to M1 and you get a MacBook Pro, you're gonna get all your ports back as well as a built-in Pro display XDR and a laptop along with a notch, of course. And I use a base model Mac Studio and it still crushes all the 4K content I throw at it. I use it to create all the videos on my channel plus process thousands of professional photos after headshot, after a heads, or headshot, headshot sessions. It's a beast of a machine still to this day. I remember when I first exported video and photography from my M1 Max enabled laptop right here. The, the export time was so fast that I barely had enough time to sit my coffee. And so for example, this MacBook Pro config here, it's the M1 Max. It has two terabytes of internal storage for video production on the, on the go, of course. And it, honestly, it still feels just as fast and new as the day I bought it. Plus it runs calm and cool without any whisper of fan noise or overheating. And speaking of, that's actually a reason to possibly wait on M3. Because number two, the processors on the M2 are hotter. They do run hotter than the M1 and early adopters have already reported these M2 Max overheating, which might be because Apple has actually overclocked these processors out of the factory. So keep that in mind if you're sensitive to heat on your legs and your, and your lap and you don't wanna burn your nuggets. Number three, the M3 is already almost here. Yes, there are rumors that the M3 is already in the works and slated for release the second half of this year. And this is exciting because these will be Apple's first three nanometer chips. The rumors also point to M3, 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pros being released in 2024. And that sounds like forever in the tech world, but it's really not that far away. I mean, we can all remember when the M1 Max MacBook Pros were released and it really doesn't feel like that long ago, does it? And the M2, while being a legit next step in the M processors, is in my opinion, definitely a stopgap to get to M3. 
the three nanometer process technology will offer improved performance and better power efficiency compared to the current chips in the M1 and M2 processors, which are currently manufactured in the five nanometer process. So think about how you'll feel when the, when the new M3s come out and you're still on five nanometer. Reason number four, there is no AV1 codec support. The M2 supports all the same formats as before, H.264, HEVC, ProRes, ProRes RAW, H.265, but this also means that you're missing out on the new and exciting codec called AV1, which has not yet arrived with Apple. It's already been available in the latest GPUs from Nvidia, AMD, and Intel, but Apple clearly has not added these yet. So these will probably come with M3. And if you don't know what the new AV1 codec is, it's a royalty-free open source codec. That's truly exciting because it eliminates the fees associated with other well-known codecs like, like H.265, which have expensive patents and royalty claims kind of rolled and baked in, meaning those latest technologies that we want trickle in at a slower pace to consumers. Well, the AV1 codec removes those barriers so all of us consumers and content creators can see the newest technologies much faster. And some of the biggest names in tech are behind it, like Google, Adobe, Netflix, and Amazon. And the fifth reason why you should probably wait for M2 is M1 base Macs are on sale. Yeah. Yeah. So if you're actually looking to buy a new Apple Silicon based Mac right now and you're on Intel or you just need an upgrade from an older Intel based Mac of some kind, buy an M1 Max or Pro now. If you really need a MacBook Pro right now, there are incredible deals on the used market and refurbished market for the M1 Max and Pro. Whether it's a Mac Studio or a MacBook, the deals are there, guys, I'm telling you. I even saw a Mac Studio Ultra on eBay the other day and a bunch of these sold for around $3,000. So if you get lucky, you can find them. Just check your local listings like Facebook Marketplace and some of the buy sell forums and you will find it. This might be the perfect time to take advantage of the early adopters that are selling off their mint barely used MacBook Pro M1 Maxes and you're able to get it for a steal. So go on those buy and sell forums, like I said, and see where those deals are in your area. Just remember to practice safety. If you meet somebody, make sure they have signed out of iCloud and followed all the erase reset steps before you purchase a used laptop or Mac Studio. So there you have it, guys. Those are five reasons why you should wait for the M3. Honestly, my advice is wait for the M3, I'm telling you. These processors are gonna be amazing. Just wait a little bit more. It may be a bit of a wait, but in the end, it'll be worth it to have the latest and greatest technology. Or if you need something new right now, get a killer deal on an M1 Max or Pro. Save your hard-earned Benjamins for the M3. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today. As always, if you enjoyed my content today, please like this video, subscribe to my channel, Ring the bell to get notified when I drop new content and I will see everybody here on my next video.